Okay, so uh, this is video number three, looking at, at section P.1, the first probability section. All right, this is what we finished with in the last video, looking at the complement rule. So I just want to uh, recall the complement rule is the probability that an event does not happen. Event A is just the same as taking one minus the probability that event A does occur. Okay, so I want to look at another example. Let's say we have some survey data where 52% of students in the survey say they drink coffee in the morning. 48% of the students drink caffeine in the afternoon. And 37% drink both in the morning and afternoon. Maybe that depends on the time of the semester this happens. What percent of students do not drink caffeine in the morning or in the afternoon? I'm going to give you about 30, 40 seconds to see if you can think about this. But my hint is think about this not. Could you figure out the probability that students do drink caffeine in the morning or in the afternoon and then use that complement rule? Okay, I'm going to show the answer. If you're still working, just pause the video and keep working on it. All right, they get 37%, but I think the answer is less important than the, the process. So how do we get 37%? So again, looking at notation right here, the probability that not M or A, so morning or afternoon, I can get rid of this not by saying 1 minus the probability that M or A happens. There's a lot of kind of uh, cumbersome notation here with parentheses. You don't need to write it out the same way. Just think about how do you get the probability that someone drinks in the morning or in the afternoon. This is that additive rule. M or A is the probability of M plus the probability of A minus the probability that they drink coffee both times. Remember that double counting we talked about in a previous video. So 52% drink in the morning, 48% drink in the afternoon, and then 37% drink both morning and afternoon. So we don't want to double count that. So we want to add these two together, which gives us 100%, uh, but then 37% uh, drink both. So we're going to subtract that. So this 63, 63% is the number of people, or the percentage of people who drink caffeine in the morning or in the afternoon, or both, and subtract that from one to get the 37%. So this is a pretty important question. If this didn't make sense to you, I suggest you, you know, look at this question maybe the next couple days or so. And of course, there's a homework assigned that was similar to this, but you know, I do expect you to be able to kind of go through this analysis using multiple formulas, multiple events. Okay, so for the rest of this video, we're going to focus on conditional probability. This is that if something happens. So notationally, it's the probability of A if B. So I want to think about this is the probability of that event A happens if we know B has already happened. A couple different ways to write this. The probability of A if B, probability of A given B, and the probability of A conditional on B. And there'll be other, other common notation for this is the probability of A you know, vertical line B. Our textbook uses the probability of A if B. So this is what I'm going to use on you know, homework, quizzes, exams, and whatnot. But just so you know, in other textbooks and, and papers and whatnot, this can be written all these different ways. Okay, so let's go back to that contingency table about sexual orientation data. So I want to know what is the probability that an American adult male is homosexual? All right, so uh, I'm going to show the answer in about 10 seconds, but if you need more time, you should pause your video now and see if you can answer this question. Okay, I'm going to show, uh, reveal the answer.
Oh, okay, so what's happened here? We get 105 out of 25, 21. Let's look at this a question again. The probability that an American adult male is homosexual. So we're not looking at all of the entire population of the survey, 5,042. We're only looking at if you're an adult male, there's this if right here, then what is the probability that you're homosexual according to the survey? Well, the contingency table says this if male means I'm only looking at this 25, 21. That's my total, that's my new denominator, 25, 21. And out of all these males, the 2,521 males in the survey, 105 of them were homosexual. So we're gonna say a 4% chance that an adult American male is homosexual, according to the survey data. All right, so the second, next question looks almost identical, but it's not quite the same. What is the probability that American adult homosexual is male? All right, I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds or so to answer this. If you need more time, pause your video. Okay, before I show it, let's think about how is this different than the last question? This one, we want to know what is the probability that American adult homosexual is male. So what's different about this, I'm only looking at the set of all people in the survey that are homosexual. So I'm only looking at 128 people. And out of those 128 homosexuals, how many of them are male? 105. We get 105 out of 128. There's 125 out of the homosexuals are male, so that's my percentage, 82%. So again, looking at the last example, we're looking at the probability that someone is homosexual, assuming they're male, 4%. This next one, we're looking at what's probably that someone is male, assuming they're homosexual, 82%. But notice just changing this if completely changes the probability. So the probability of A if B is generally not going to be the same as the probability of B if A, as we saw in the last example. Okay, so I want to go over the probability rule. There's a lot of formulas in here. So this is something you kind of want to write down on a piece of paper, you know, have your have these formulas handy when you're going through the homework and whatnot. Um, don't worry about memorizing them right away. Just be able to use them. The probability of A if B is always, this is always true, the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Think about that given B, we're assuming B has happened, so that becomes the new denominator. Looking at the visual, if B, I'm only looking at you know the yellow circle. I don't care about anything else happening because I, I know event B has occurred. So out of this yellow circle, how much of it, what proportion, probability is A and B. So the combined yellow and purple region, A and B, is the numerator. All right, so let's look at this based on a recent survey. 52% of students drink caffeine in the morning, 48% of students drink caffeine in the afternoon, and 37 drink caffeine in the morning and afternoon. The same data as before. So what percent of students who drink caffeine in the morning also drink caffeine in the afternoon? All right, I'm gonna pause for 10 seconds or so. If you need more time, pause the video. But I suggest you write out, you know, morning for M, afternoon for A, and write out what are we looking for first in terms of the probability notation. Okay, let's discuss this. Of the students who drink caffeine in the morning, that is the condition. We're assuming that is true. We're only looking at people who drink caffeine in the morning. So that's where this if M happens. We want to know how many of those also drink caffeine in the afternoon. So the probability of A if M. 
So to get that, that is the probability of A and M. They both happen. That's that 37%. Divided by the probability that people drink coffee, caffeine in the morning, which is 52%. 37 over 52 to get this 71%. Another way to approach um, the last problem is to set up a, a table, set up a contingency table. So we have 52% of students drink caffeine in the morning, 48 in the afternoon, 37, both morning and afternoon. So to set up a table, we need those that drink caffeine in the morning, those that don't drink caffeine in the morning, those that drink caffeine in the afternoon, those that don't. It doesn't matter which one's rows or which one's columns, and that we're going to total these. So we know the total of all of this has to be 100%. And what else do we know? 52% drink caffeine in the morning. All right, some drink in the afternoon, some don't, but a total of 52 are in the morning. And what about this 48? 40% drink caffeine in the afternoon, so that has to go right here. And then 37% drink caffeine in the morning and the afternoon. That's both caffeine in the morning and caffeine in the afternoon. That's this 37. And now we can start filling in data. The total has to be 100%. So 52% and then 48% has to add up to 100. And same thing right here, 52 and 48. But then right here, this 37 and now 15 has to add up to 52. So this 15 came from these two numbers have to add up to 52. And then these two numbers have to add up to 52 and then 11. So we have a table. So the probability of um, drinking caffeine in the afternoon, if you drink caffeine in the morning, is this 37 out of 52. Looking at the contingency table, so let's go back here. So again, we're looking only if you drink caffeine in the morning, so I'm only looking at the morning row to get this 52. And then we're looking at if morning, you're looking at both to get that 37. And then if you want to do not morning or afternoon, that would be that 37%. Okay, so in the next video, we'll talk about uh, some more formulas on this multiplicative rule, and then we'll look at um, disjoint and independent events.